How do you use Q plus E in the opposite direction? Alright, let me show you, McBrilla. Let me show you the various ways that you can use our tennis swaps. From YouTube and Twitter. Nice. Well, welcome. A bold plan. Okay. Welcome a challenge. I'm gonna remove cooldown so I can show it a number of times. You were the first YouTuber I found when I started Hots from the Nexus Challenge. Ah, cool. And what games did you used to play, uh, Juju Shinobi? Alright, we'll, we'll, we'll dominate Chaos with this. So you can do it like this. With honor, from this I range. Uh, keeping in mind that the further away you are when your face prism gets back to you, the better. And so I can I can cast it when I'm inbound, and we're going to have a mini friend. swap. And you use that if you want to gain distance on your target without moving him or yourself too far Today, away from the main strong. battle. For example, let's say... We have this big apocalypse action going on on top of the target dummy. And I want to join the fight fast, but I don't want him to go out of APOC. I would do this. We're now still close together to each other. Huh? But I don't displace him too much. So on the inbound trajectory, there is very little movement swap. But the longer you wait when you go back, you get this big elastic band effect where the displacement is really huge and so you I can see. also do that from your main base to someone for example uh, i'm here behind the gate uh, wait let's just wait till our tanner leaves so we kill the minion so he'll actually leave so you can do it like this and you'll swap him into gate and then you can body block him and finish him off. Uh, there's other ways to do it as well. For example, you can be next to someone and you do this. It's a very fast displacement, very little reaction time. You stay in the middle of the fight, but they get thrown out. I stay almost in my original location, but With they get thrown out. So that is a great way to peel. And this is why Artanis now can be solo warrior. Because there's peel now. You just need to use your Q and E properly. You can determine how much displacement you want by how long you wait with the face prism. If I, let's say if these giants are my gate, I can do it like this too. I can put them in the gate and then kill him on body block. Or I... Uh, I mean, there's, there's many ways to use it, which just makes it so fun. If you push W when you QE, is the distance shorter? I don't know about W. I, I heard something about that, but... I don't know about that one. I would say that Artanis is better than Muradin. He's different though. No stun, right? So it's definitely different, but I prefer him. ETC though, ETC remains special. Uh, Juju Shinobi says, I came from Overwatch, Mech Warrior Online and RuneScape. Weird variety of games. Okay, cool. So you found Heroes due to Nexus Challenge. Awesome. Well, welcome to the game. Heroes has seen uh, quite a lot of growth recently. So let's take a look at the patch notes together. Okay, so we've just released a new patch, 20th of December. In order to apply a few balance changes to the Nexus. Check out the full patch notes below. Now, just to precursor this, as far as I know, this one is one of those change the numbers patches with a few bug fixes that are easy to fix the really big bug fixes should be in another patch next week or or tomorrow or whatever maybe like next week they do a lot of patches some of them are only numbers so i've reviewed this a bit and it seems to be mostly number changes just to kind of fix the most egregious errors in balance Grave Golems were somewhat ignored haunted minds games were longer than they wanted to be and so they have been increased in strength. 
more attack and more stomp damage. Okay, so can no longer ignore the objective on this battleground. Uh, Ragnaros hit the Nexus and it was much rejoicing and despairing, depending on which side you were. He was one of the highest win rates of uh, the game and one of the better hero releases. Not the most overpowered ever, but definitely up there. So they have done a 5% nerf to his Empower Sulfurus damage, a 4% nerf to Living Meteor, and Molten Core gets an increase of 20 seconds to the cooldown. This is trade where he becomes a 4 to her keep. Then the Q stunned swing got a very small nerf. What is it? 3, 3.5%? Some head maths here. Uh, actually, it's about 4.5%, I think. Anyway, small damage nerf. Again, very small damage nerf here as well. The same, about 4, 4.5%. An explosive rune, the E, also been nerfed for 5% of its damage. Lava wave cooldown also increased by 20 seconds. And the damage has been reduced significantly. Which means you will probably no longer die from 100 to 0. Even if you walk in the most unfortunate path possible. Still, I would recommend you to dodge it. Pay attention to that very, very short warning time of just 15 seconds when he whispers gently like velvet velvet chocolate in your ear by fire be purged look at the mini map and when you see the big flame barreling down the lane that you are in try to extricate yourself from the situation and make haste walk north or south i recommend not east or west the talent also for the shifting meteor was pretty easy to stack it now requires 75 target hits instead of 50. I think that's a fair change. So all in all, I think Ragnaros, just my verdict, is still good. He may even still be far above 50% win rate, but it's definitely deserved. I'm going to continue to play him, and on my stream you will see how he fares whenever he makes it through the band pick phase, which so far he hasn't yet. Uh, Zeratul uh, just gets a small change to his wormhole. There's now a small delay between activating the second part of the blink so that uh, noobs don't accidentally double-click it. Uh, Warrior, that's a good change by the way. Artanis gets a small shield increase of just 15 points. Which is 4%. Um, 4% increase. It's nice. Uh, he was already very good. Uh, I don't think it was merited, but as an Artanis main... Oops, what did I just do? As an Artanis main, I am very happy with it. Uh, Diablo, uh, one of the winningest heroes of the mer current moment right now as well. He gets a nerf to his spell shield passive. I still think it's the way to go. Still the best at 7. But you can also go battle momentum to get more Qs and Es. You become more of a CC bot, but less survivability. If you feel like you're going to completely get ignored, not get taken out, not get focused, and it's all your allies who get focused, definitely go for the diabolical momentum it's called the cooldown reset on q and e every time you auto attack but generally speaking it's still very good talent permanent spell shield come on uh, bulwark is now a two seconds to four seconds resistance on q instead of two to five when you take the talent it's still freaking busted and you should definitely still always take this i'm all for advocating different talent choices but the fact of the matter is, it is by far the best level 1 talent, and the others don't compete with it. Just to let you know what the other talents are, I will just look them up. Uh, the other talents for Diablo are a life leech talent that gives him 1% life leech for every auto attack. Speak, minion. Uh, based on their max health, or a regeneration. But in combat, a 25% resistant far outstrips the trickle of HP you get from either regeneration or auto attack life leech. Are you a big, fat, hulking, wrestling master that throws people over his shoulder and uh, destroys them? Take the Q talent bulwark. Are you someone who likes to play badminton? terrible analogy let's just let's just skip and just say take that one and let's never speak of this again um and then the hellgate gets an increase of 30 seconds i think that's fair as well 
The Haka gets a buff to enhanced agility, but I still think the best talent is the anti-PVE that gives him bonus Dark Swarm duration and damage against PVE. It is way too good to skip. In fact, I think they should make it baseline, bit weaker version of it, but make it baseline so that you can actually have other valid choices. However, having said that, maybe they really do want the Haka not to have only one mode of play where he split soaks, kills a wave in four seconds and then joins the fight and actually have him be kind of like a, an actual warrior with constant bonus movement speed, but not the hero that does constant split soak. Maybe we are just too narrow minded and with the Haka already being top tier, this definitely gives him a new mode of, uh, of play and I do encourage you to try this one out. This is not like the Diablo Q where you only have one valid choice. This has actually become a valid choice, I think. So if you want to play the Haka as a solo tank, the build that I recommend is Isolation with uh, all the Dark Swarm talents and then Enhanced Agility. You can do some serious damage and disruption in the back line. Finally, the talent tooltip for Templar Seal on Artanis now correctly states that the cooldown for Blade Dash Recharge is 100% faster rather than 150% faster. Okay. Ragnaros Alt R will now self cast Sephora Smash. Okay, so that is the patch. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little preview review thing. And there was one more thing that I wanted to show because uh, I got word that there was something on Reddit about Artanis Shield. Mm, there was a blue post about it let me see if i can actually find that because right now artanis takes hp damage when he gets damage that procs his shield and supposedly that was not meant to happen this used to be a bug and then it was fixed and now it has been reintroduced as a bug let me see where the blue post is. So, the blue post is right here, so I'll open that one as well. Give me a second. Okay, so the blue post reads, the intention is, Artanis takes damage, he loses health or shielding. If shield overload is off cooldown, Artanis gains a shield after the damage has been done. So this is intended, but in the past they said it was not intended. So in the past, after the fix, uh, what happened was Artanis is a thousand life. He takes 50 damage. He gains a shield, let's say 400. His shield is now 350. The damage went off of the shield, his HP is still a thousand, plus regeneration. But currently, the way it works, he goes to 950, now he gets a 400 HP shield. So he keeps being able to get trickled down that way. Um, and we thought that's not intended, but apparently they say it is intended. I did some investigation to be sure we didn't change anything, and Artanis has functioned this way as far back as July of this year. Yeah, but no one played Artanis. In fact, we're pretty sure Shield Overload has worked this way since it was released. I don't think that's actually true. Oh. Really? Did we all just engage in mass hysteria? He's saying it's never been it's never been different. There is one exception where if Artanis would receive fatal damage while Shield Overload cooldown is active, we instead drop him to one health and then activate a shield. There are various design and technical reasons for this and safe to say at some point we might revisit shield overload and the tech surrounding it. If you guys are seeing anything other than that, let us know. Huh. So, mass hysteria, huh? And there's also a uh, a trailer. Let me stop the Heroes of the Storm music and then we're gonna go back to the gameplay. A trailer uh, or, or a teaser, so to say, of something coming up. Oh, that was loud. A throwing axe, what could it be? A Tauren? Could it be a Farseer? 
He doesn't like humans. So he doesn't like Arthas. So he could be Alliance. That's it. It could be Horde. In fact, it could be a troll. In fact, it could be Zul'jin. Well, I'm pretty hyped about that. Cool shit. It could be a gnome axe thrower. <laughs> Sorry, I was trolling there, guys. Oh, it works. Wait, what did you just... <laughs> I Thank you, you some skill. Away with you. Your killing screen is at a double kill. Triple kill. Okay. <clears throat> so, Leyline Seal counter sank. That's good to know. A valiant effort. 